<laughs> you dance a little bit. Come on. Jive. 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 <laughs> Who makes you believe in your dreams? That's the question, huh? What? <laughs> let's do this. Let's do this. Thank you, Buddha Taps. I'm glad you hear me loud and clear. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Whoa, what's up? <laughs> Dulux, welcome to the house, brother. I like to think you are a brother. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Am I okay? Am I? I feel like I'm upside you are, down. You're facing the other side. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh. There we go. There we go. Dance a little bit, Lady May. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I don't know what I'm doing. Are you sorted now? It's okay. Yes, it's okay. Uh, uh, let me just talk to my people. Naranza kum showeta in kwenu vitoramina isifose chwakaslamu nuku. Welcome to another session of the He At Live chats. Tonight, we have a special guest and the first lady to come up on these live chats. So welcome, Lady May! Oh, let's give her a church clap, please. A church clap, a church clap right there. <laughs> How you doing? Can you hear me, though? <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Okay. You good? Great. You can hear me? I'm good. Yeah. All sure. righty. Welcome to the zone. <laughs> Welcome to He Arts Conversations, where we connect about art, about Thank the heart, you. about life, and we just celebrate the beauty of it all, huh? Yeah. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here. We're glad to have you. So please tell me, uh, let me know if my energy is jumping at you right there, okay? Um, no, I, I think I need your energy, because, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Okay. It worked. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. Um, for people that might not know you, who are you? Can you just tell them who you are and say hi to everybody? Honorable Bay is also in the house. His word spreader is in the house. Welcome, guys. Welcome, guys. All right. You go. I'm a human being first of all. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. that that's me. <laughs> All right. Okay, so um, hi, everybody. Thank you for coming on live with us tonight. Um, for those who don't know, my name is Yvonne May. Uh, what else should I say? I'm a singer, songwriter, recording artist. Um, I'm a mom. I'm a chef. Uh, yeah. Yes. I guess you'll find out more as we go on, right? Yes, yes, welcome. So I normally start this session with a, a check-in session. And what a, what a check-in is, Thank is you. normally the, the same way you would do it when you're entering the, the airport or wherever you go, you check in and let people know. We want to know internally your feels, how you're feeling at this moment. So if you were a fruit at this very moment, <laughs> What fruit would you be and why? <laughs> I would be, oh goodness, I think I would be a pear. You'd be a pear, okay. All right, why is that? Why so? <laughs> why a that, pear? That, that's my favorite fruit and it's, it's, it's very juicy and yeah, I, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> <laughs> We want to know more. We want to know the answer you just filtered in your head right now. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. No. We'll let you, yeah. We'll let you escape that. We'll let you escape that. Thank All right. You. We are glad. But pears are also Thank very you. heavy at the same time. So are you feeling heavy tonight? 
No, they actually make your food digest very fast, so they're quite light. Ah. <laughs> All right. So tonight we're going to be digesting in all the right ways. Exactly. That is good to hear. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's all it. right. No, yeah. let's jump right into it. Let's jump right into it. Take us to um, where you were born. Take us back to, I would like to assume where? your camera is not very steady. Yeah, I'm trying to make it steady. I don't know what I'm do doing right, but it's okay. I'm going to keep holding it till I figure it out. <laughs> All right. So just take us to um, growing up in Nigeria, if I'm not mistaken, right? Um, where did you grow up? And an average day, what you would do as a child, like playing in the sand or what were you doing? What was a childhood like? Okay, I, so I was born in, in a city called Ibaro in Nigeria. Very, okay. very peaceful, very calm. Used to be laid back, but not anymore. And um, I think growing up, I was, I, I was more of an indoor child. Yeah, mm. I, was, I was that boring child that was mostly indoors. But if you found me outside... I was mostly playing with boys. I would be on the soccer soccer field or where boys were playing hectic, you know, stuff. That's where you find me. <laughs> so so I can assume that you've got some soccer skills there going for you. Uh, uh, no, I, I, because I remember the first time I played soccer with uh, a team from my church back home i ran the entire field 90 minutes and i did not touch the soccer ball not even once <laughs> <laughs> but you were in so, the yeah. field <laughs> i was just i was just running back and forth like a headless chicken and by the time we were done i was the most tired person and i did not touch the ball not even once <laughs> so um all right people are loving your story that is funny because <laughs> you are in the field you are running more than everyone but you don't touch the ball did you i don't did even you, touch the ball did you tell people you were playing soccer though <laughs> can you say you were playing soccer <laughs> I, I don't even know how i got on the pitch in the first place they were like yeah team a team b you be here and i'm like me no, and before we knew what was going on, I was there, and then we were just—I was just going back, I'm like, oh my goodness, yeah. So, story, story of my life. <laughs> oh wow, that is a funny story. So, yeah. um, just to break. So now here you are, you are a little yeah. a young girl. You grow up, you are chilling with the guys, but you spend a lot of time in the house. And I would assume that's where you picked up on the cooking because you've got a passion for food, right? Um. I hope so, because also, I mean, I think I'm going to expose myself. Let everybody know. Yes. I was a lazy child. I was that mm. child that did not like to go into the kitchen. I would have to be <laughs> shouted at before I would go into the kitchen. I would always give excuses before going into the kitchen. I always had a runny stomach, you know, when it was time to cook. I just always felt sick somehow when they say, let's go cook. You find me in the bathroom first. I was sitting there for like 10, 15 minutes. You would have to come bang on the door. Come out and come into the kitchen. So, <laughs> I, <laughs> so I don't know where the love came from, actually. So I, I really don't know. Because so I you don't have any history with food. It just came like recently or like as an adult. I, I think it came as an adult because I remember w when I went into to college, Mm. I was, I, I didn't want to cook. So I bought takeaways all the time. I wow. would eat bread and butter. I would, I would eat out. I just didn't want to cook. But I knew I could, <laughs> but I just didn't want to. <laughs> so, wow. So I think it actually started when, um, yeah, after school, and I moved to Lagos, and then mm. I was living by myself with a few friends, then I realized, that's when I realized that I actually had a problem eating other people's food. 
Ah. So, yeah. <laughs> that forced then you started me to start to... cooking. Yes. Okay. <laughs> So a lot of people don't know this. They only relate to you as a musician and we're going to get to that part. But you have a vision right. and a dream of owning May's Kitchen, right? Oh, yeah. Can you share oh, yeah. with us about, can you share with us a bit about May's Kitchen and also how culture comes up in your food? Because I've noticed that you cook a certain kind of food which tells a story yeah. a bit more about where you grew up and where you came from yeah. so tell us about my kitchen and also how culture is transported through your meals yeah so so may's kitchen started um i think in in 2000 in my mm -hmm. head it started mm. in my head i had baked a pie and um you know i was very ambitious i had baked a pie and then by the time i was done baking the pie with all the rich ingredients i had put in it when it was done baking i tasted it and i could not eat it it um Ooh. yeah the <laughs> dough was salty <laughs> the dough was i had put too much salt in the dough so i gave it to i gave it to 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 my hubby and i said uh I'm done. Then he tasted it and it was like um I'm sorry. I love you but I can't eat this. <laughs> I, felt, <laughs> I, I felt so hurt and I felt and so that made me go back into the kitchen to do it again. And I told myself, "Yeah, I'm get it right and I'm going to do this." And that's how we started. And then a few years down the line I would cook and I would take pictures and I would put on social media like Facebook and yeah. and people started commenting like oh this is nice where did you get this and I'd be like no I cooked it and they yeah. they would start asking so are you selling them and I said no I just cooked it for myself and so they pushed me and they were like no mm -hmm. we want to taste that food we want to taste it it looks good so they pushed me kind of they like put pressure on me we want the food we want the food and that's how we just started like uh like just two three years ago and i just wow. decided okay let's do yeah that's beautiful so, and, then, and my culture plays a, a big role in my cooking because i love food from 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 nigeria the richness yeah. of the food it yeah. tells we are how we how we enjoy our food the attention we pay to when cooking the the richness of the ingredients the time spent in cooking you know it just tells it, it expresses who we really are so that's how my culture yeah. plays a uh, part in 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 my food and and cooking yeah it, it yeah it definitely does tell a story and i want i would like to know that i mean in put in preparing your food now that you've lived in South Africa have you learned any South African dishes um and how long yeah. have you been in South Africa by the way uh uh this will be 11 years what yeah <laughs> wow that's a long time that's a long time <laughs> yeah all right that's a long yeah. so what dishes have you learned and which are your favorite dishes in South Africa and what also Languages? no dishes <laughs> oh okay like what i love, do you like i love the i love your beef stew i love the beef stew with all my heart i love i love the chicken stew also i love the dumplings i love the wurst mm. i love I love the the shisengyama vibe all of that yeah. you know <laughs> I have tried kota once and uh, it was good <laughs> it was amazing <laughs> I think yeah I all think right. Yeah. All right yeah, welcome to everybody jumping on the conversation welcome we see you Mr welcome Forgiven back. um he's with Freda um uh, Mr O oh, Ipokwe we see all of you guys welcome 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 So yeah, um Lady May. Yeah. I asked you about the dishes and you went into languages. Why which okay. language have you learned so far? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um you have refused to teach me so <laughs> ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Listen, 
I lived in Germany for two years yeah. and I came back speaking okay. the language. You know, I understand Yay! that they both well not not fully like just the basics i knew how to say the basics around and to have a bit of a conversation and i could less i could hear but you've been here for 11 years and by 11 years you should have chosen a language by now and L listen, learned it let's say you see god god gives us diversity you know he has blessed us with uh, different abilities and capabilities and so mm -hmm. Learning languages, he did not bless me with that gift or talent. No, I don't accept that. <laughs> but I must say, yeah, I must say that I, I pick uh, Zulu here and there. I can tell yeah. what you're talking yeah. about. I, yeah, I can sing it fluently. Yeah. I can sing <laughs> any language fluently, but I can't speak. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We're going to get everybody to comment on what, um, please send a comment on which language she should learn first. And then also <laughs> comment on, and also comment on by when should she give us the first <gasps> clip on Instagram speaking that language. Okay. So we have a challenge for you. Comment and let us know. Okay. And then we're going to bring an it assignment. on. Bring All right, it on. We're gonna play I'm ready. We're going to play a quick game. I call it five on five. Okay. Uh, I made up this game today. So this is how it's going to work. We have to use five words. Okay. So if I am saying, if I am saying this, that's where I stop. Then you have to complete from where I stop with your five words. Okay. And then oh, you Lord. bring it back to me. Where you stop, I will continue. And where I stop, you will continue for the last time. And then I will come back and close it. Okay? So we will have that. Oh, so no. it's, gonna, it's eventually, it's five rounds of five words each. And these words, we're not just speaking them. We're not speaking them. We're singing them. All right? <gasps> yes. So, and we don't know. So I don't have an idea where the song is going to go. I don't even have a, 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 a tune to them or anything. So we're just gonna go and jump into on board. All right. Woo! What have I come up with? <laughs> Let's do this. I go first. Oh, I'm scared now. <laughs> it's never wrecking. All right. Um I need to learn a language for everybody to know. I want I to speak. I want to sing it. Your turn. <laughs> so everybody can know that I. You carry on. I don't know. <laughs> am from Nigeria. Finish. <laughs> I think that we now have a song. We have a song. We have a song. So we have I, I people. I don't know about that. No, we do. We do. We have a song. So I have, we have people saying that uh, they want you to learn Sipedi. So two people so far have said Sipedi. One has, says, <laughs> has said Kosa. So we'll see as we go how many are you going to learn. And they are giving you, wow, they are very generous. They're giving you three months to learn it. So, oh, that is so kind. <laughs> that is so kind. Because with this lockdown, I would give you three days. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> be nice, bro. All right, be but, nice. All right, I'll be nice. We'll give you the three months, and then we'll decide at the end of this uh, conversation which language you should learn. And uh, you're going to give us a short video and, and introduce yourself in that language and sing a song in that language. In three months' time. Yeah. Yes. But, but, but is, is, <laughs> is Spady not harder than Zulu? <laughs> yeah, but then you get you need to get your people to say Zulu down here. But we'll see. We'll decide at the end. Okay? Please we'll say give you a free Zulu, rate. Guys, please, please say Zulu. <laughs> so oh without goodness. getting too ahead of myself, and without okay. you getting too ahead of yourself as well with this next question, I want you to just tell me okay. about 
um, you spoke about the first time you started cooking. It was because of you, after you cooked, the pie was not good. You, you, the, per, the first person you served it to was your hubby. And he didn't like it. But he was kind enough to gently let you know. Right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I want you to tell us about how you met, where you met, and um, what, tell us about the thing that made you to say he's the one. <sighs> okay, so I, how did I meet him? It was a, it was a New Year Eve. It was the 31st of December. Um, what year was that? I think 2000, going into yeah. 2001. And so yeah. we were going to church, you know, like you would normally go to church for service. For crossover, crossover service, service. Yeah. 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 So we were going to church and we decided to walk down to church. My cousins, all of us, we were like a huge clan just walking. And so we got to the end of the, the road and we saw this, um, this stage set up and music was blasting and young people were having fun. And I was like, we were like, who are these people? So we stopped by and we were just watching them, not knowing that the leader of the group knew me. He had seen me oh. sing in a church somewhere. So he saw me, he spotted me from the stage and he just came and said hi after they had sang. And so that's how I met him. And that's how mm -hmm. I was invited to the group. Like, oh, we'd like you to be a part of the group. And blah 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 and i said okay cool so i went and i became a part of the group and uh the friendship grew and that was it and that was how i met and we became very good friends and um we went to the same church at some point and then yeah we were traveling all around nigeria together um so, yeah, was he also a singer short. was he also a singer he or was, was he an instrumentalist no, he was he was a rapper and he was a writer. Yeah. Ah. On the side. So was he a Christian rapper by then or was he just yes. a rapper and you just yeah. came was, you met like he was Excuse a, me? you know it was a born again <laughs> Christian rapper and all of that and yeah so yeah. All right. That. Okay, so uh, these conversations are called uh, He Arts Conversation, which they're inspired by yep. um, my book. I wrote this book, which is a collection of short stories and uh, poetry. And I wanted to create this conversation to borrow from the fictional characters and the fictional world that is in this book and bring it to yeah. real life stories that you live or uh, we all live, you know? So I'm going to read one of the yeah. stories in this book this is the copy that you're all gonna get and buy. This is my copy because it's yeah. it's, it's 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 old, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I will read page. I read it over time. So yeah, I will read page thirty three, and it's called the Day of Liberation. So I will read the story, and then after that we will engage on this conversation, um, continuing from your love story. You meeting this guy at church, you fall in love, and you move together to South Africa, right? No, he, he moved first, and yeah. after, like, five years, I came. Okay. And when you yeah. came to South Africa, what was your feeling about South Africa at the time, when you were preparing to come to South Africa and then arriving? <clears throat> Listen, as a child, I had fallen in love with South Africa as a teenager. So mm. I always listened to Yvonne Chaka Chaka, Lucky Dube, um... The, uh, Brenda Farsi. I my dad had all their records and so I listened to them and I fell in love with South Africa and I watched a documentary about Soweto many years yeah. ago and yeah. uh, so I just, I just had this picture of South Africa in my head and I always dreamt of living in South Africa as a as a young as a teenager and so and every event of my life started leading towards that, towards me mm. coming here. Even, mm. even God giving his word, speaking into my life, it all turned out you would be here. So, wow. yeah, that's, that's how it, it, all it right. happened from the start. So, 
he calls you and say now i want you to come join me here what are the feelings on your way coming here sitting in the you were on the plane definitely because there's no buses from here to nigeria right so you were in a plane yeah. and you are coming here what are your feelings what's going on in your in 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 your heart in your mind because you know you're going to meet your person but you're also going to meet them in a new context in a new space yeah. you know so yeah. how were you feeling what were your I feelings was, i was nervous i was i was very nervous i was nervous to the point where i missed my arrival time i gave him the wrong arrival time <laughs> i'm a mess <laughs> so I had said I was going to arrive 11 p.m. um 11 a.m. the the next day whereas yeah. I was arriving 11 p.m. the day before. Wow. So I was very nervous. I was I wasn't sure, you know, where I was going. So I, he had I to wait the whole time. No, I'll tell you what oh. happened. So I I arrived and I realized Oh my goodness, I mean, oh I tumble. What am I going to do? <laughs> so I looked at the guy that had sat beside me on the flight and I realized mm. that he had a phone and he was calling mm. someone. So I walked up to him and said, "Please, can I use your phone?" So I used his phone and I called him. And I said, "Um, I'm at the airport." And I was like, "What airport?" <laughs> like, you said you're arriving 11 a.m. What airport? Are you okay? Are you lost? Are you are you fine? What country are you in? I'm like, no, I'm in South Africa. <laughs> and so, oh wow. Oh imagine. wow. So you're right the day was, before. A day before. So that tells oh, you how nervous I was. I was very <laughs> nervous. I didn't know what. <laughs> so so he had to come he was living in Midrand. So he had to mm. like yeah. drive all the way and then he had told me it's cold it's winter wear mm. jacket wear jersey i was like no i'm coming from lagos it's hot it's uh, i can take it <laughs> when i got out of the airport and the winter hit me <laughs> i was wearing a <laughs> shirt like a t-shirt <laughs> wow <laughs> so, yeah so i was like yeah this is the real deal so um when i came I realized that because we had been like uh almost 6 years apart. Yeah. In different environments, it was yeah. it was a bit uh yeah, it was a bit yeah, there was clashes of mm -hmm. mindset. I'm bringing my mindset. His From mind home. is already like exactly and all of that. So I had exactly. to start learning how to adjust to the environment. to the people mm. to the lifestyle i had to start on learning things and learning new things and keeping my yeah. old self somewhere yeah it was it was a lot but it was fun at the end all right and just giving me a number just the number not anything else how long did you guys get to live together in sa uh four years four years All right. All right, I'm going to go we're going to visit my story on page 33. If you have my book, you can open page 33. If you don't, you can download the electronic copy on Amazon. Um it's available there and um if you don't, uh you can also get the hard copies after the lockdown. Let's read, let me read for you quickly. You listen and then we'll speak on this. So, Day of Liberation. On the 27th of April 1994, The whole nation was awake and alive. The dusty streets of Tembisa, which we once walked in fear for our lives, was the 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 very streets where we had lost our loved ones, had become the grounds of celebration. On that day, we walked the streets with purpose, pride, and joy. The tears in our eyes were not of sadness or pain, but jubilation. We were part of the few that had lived to see this historic day. We hardly slept the night before. The whole township was alive. Everyone you met on the streets had a smile on their face. I slept with my identity document under my pillow just to remind myself of how I used to dream of freedom. And now it wasn't just a dream, but I lived to see it. I lived to see South Africa be given to its rightful owners. You could swear it was a Sunday morning. 
We all had our church outfits on, shined our shoes, combed our afros, and our faces glowed with Vaseline. Your father was wearing the brown suit he had received from your grandfather when he graduated from University of the Witwatersrand as a lawyer. And I, I wore the red dress that Miss Bertha had given me for Christmas as a Christmas present the previous year. Around 4 a.m. that Wednesday, we left our houses to stand in the long queues at the Janlube local sports field. For the very first time, what we had to say really mattered. The sun came out shining brighter than ever. We all knew who we, who we, we all knew who we were going to vote for, without a doubt. Utata Nelson Holichata Mandela. Finally, our turn had come. I remember it as if it were yesterday. It felt like the first time your father, when your father and I made love. I felt alive, liberated, and the future seemed so bright. I never had the chance to finish school. I got married to your father at a very, as a very young lady. Voting meant that young graduates would finally get a chance to be employed by the big white firms. All the ladies commented on how handsome your father looked in his graduation suit. And the gentlemen couldn't stop themselves from looking at me in my beautiful red dress. I could see your father was getting jealous. He pulled me to himself with, he pulled me to himself with his strong arms and kissed me with his soft lips in front of all the gentlemen who stood in front of the voting line. He was my Romeo and I was his Juliet. Everybody called us the brook and ridge of the township because I would get lost in his eyes every time he looked at me. All he would say is, I love you. And I would know that everything was possible as long as I had him by my side. But that all changed within a blink of an eye. So what does that love story remind you of and what does it say to you, if anything? Okay, um, this kind of reminds me of my should I say story or my experience or my, yeah. I don't know, but yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just kind of, yeah. So, um, reminds me of how I met him. Uh, mm. he's, he, he was very protective, very, yeah, very protective of me. And he was my greatest cheerleader. I, I would yeah. say, even when I did not believe in myself at all, he was my greatest mm -hmm. cheerleader, and um, I could I could pause the whole world for him, and he he would do the same. And that was mm -hmm. that was what made me pack up my bags in, at the peak of my career back home in Lagos, mm -hmm. pack my bag and move to Johannesburg just because this is the person that I have been with and I want to be with for the rest of my life, and and so you know. At that point, when you said everything just changed, everything yeah. changed um, about eight years ago, 2012. Yeah. At Helen Joseph, right mm. there at Helen Joseph, when he took his last breath after he had been ill for over a year and been in and out of hospital, and uh, and towards towards the end of his last days, it didn't look like he was going to die. No, mm. it did not look like. There was hope. The doctors were like, oh, yeah, he's responding to treatment. He's going to be all right. And, you know, and I was so happy. And I kept doing my thing, music, church. We had we had um, a two-year-old son. Yeah. Yeah, at, at, at that time. And so... Everything started looking more hopeful, like, yeah, okay, we're going to come out of this. We're going to fight this. We're going to beat this, you know. Uh, but then I remember that Thursday night, mm. that Thursday night, um, he, he had not been talking for, for a whole week. He had, not, yeah. he had not been able to speak for an entire mm. week. But that Thursday night, as, I, as the visiting hours were over and I was leaving, and I said to him, as always, I love you. That night, 
he said it back to me. He responded. And he said, I love you. And you, you can imagine how much joy filled my heart. And I was going to church. I, I was going to church. Yeah. It, was, it was midweek service. So I was so excited. I got to church. I led praise and worship. I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. He's responding. But then that midnight, he, he took his last breath. And mm -hmm. he was gone. Mm. And so I remember, I remember that Friday, I was at a shoot, a photo shoot with a friend, and I was just feeling mm. uneasy. I was so anxious. I wanted to go to the hospital. I wanted to see him. I was like, I need to go. It's almost visiting hours. I need to go. I didn't know that she already knew, mm. you know, because she was with me at that time. The hospital had called. I didn't pick my phone. She picked. So they had given her the news. So she yeah. was trying to stall. She was trying to keep me calm before going with me. So wow. that Friday, yeah, I got to the hospital and I found my pastor there, my, my former pastor. And I was mm. like, okay, what's going on? He was not on his bed as usual. And I was like, where is he? They said, no, they had to take him to. I'm like, I see you, you know then uh they couldn't tell me at that point you know so they gave me his stuff that oh we don't need these things anymore but i still couldn't you know i couldn't put it together like he's gone you were just tired so, you could feel there was a change but you did not think yeah, that could, could be the change i could feel something was not right so mm. they gave me his clothes and everything and so they took me home and then i got home and i found some other few people in the house i'm like what are people doing here and so that was when i was told that uh he's he's gone he died mm. midnight i think everything just passed <laughs> from that mm. moment everything just passed mm. yeah so i mm. can relate that story started so mm. beautifully well onto that exactly. point. And, uh, exactly. Yeah. And I mean, knowing the fact that you speak a lot about your, your uh, Christ, and I think I wanted to share the story because a lot of people relate to you from the point of the pulpit. They see you as the preacher yeah. through your music, as a minister of the singer. word. They see you yeah. as a singer. They see you as a songwriter. And every time they encounter you, they encounter you at a place where you're wearing your cape as a Superman, where you are like, exactly. let's go, let's go. Yeah. And very few people will ever imagine that Superman or Superwoman in your case takes off the cape. And when he takes off the cape, there is a heart, there is a story, and yeah. there is a journey. There's a story. And There's a journey. when they get the story and the journey, I think they will understand your praise. They'll understand why yeah. you do what yeah. you do the way you do. So yeah. the one person yeah. that you you packed up your bags to be with today at that moment, at that second, he's no more. Yeah. You know? No more. And yeah, just like this character here, her name is Lerato. She realizes, she packs her bags from KZN. She leaves her family. Oh, wow. She found yeah. this love of her life um, yeah. who was yeah. at a a trip you know and they fall in love and she packs her bags and she lives and she comes yeah. to live with this man and they yeah. are starting this beautiful family she also falls pregnant but she doesn't know yet in this beginning of the story and i will not reveal the rest yeah but she doesn't know okay. yet at the, at the beginning <laughs> and so she then um so when this happened in this beautiful day where everything is beautiful then this change happened so when yeah. he leaves you how do you pick up yourself? How do you pick up your pieces? How do you decide that I know I've got this two-year-old that's going to look at me and I need to stand up and I can't fall. I can't break. Yeah. How do you go yeah. through so, it? So um, what, I, what I had not said was um, it was all happened in the middle of my first concert, my first worship concert in 2012. Wow. So we were wow. we were planning it together. We were, you know, putting the whole stuff together. And so he, the concert was supposed to be in November. And so he passed on in October, just like Ooh. almost two weeks before, before the concert. So yeah. when that happened, I, I, I hung it 
I said, I said, God, I'm not, I'm done. Mm. I said, I'm not singing anymore. I'm not ministering anymore because it, it was a whole, it was a whole journey that, that, yeah. So I said, I'm not doing this anymore. So mm. I was really angry. I felt very mm. angry that something was taken from me without my consent. So mm. I was, I, I told God, I said, I'm done. But, mm. you know, when, when there's a call on your life, there's grace for you to pull through. Mm. Mm. No, matter, no matter how deep and broken mm. you are, there, there mm. is your grace to pull through. And mm. so after the, after the funeral in October, I was still very angry. But, mm. you know, everybody kept telling me, you know, you're a blessing and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. And so the Holy Spirit kept energizing me. Mind you, there was no time for me to, to sit down and mourn and break down. Yeah. No family members here. It's, it was just both of us and our son. So yeah. I had to plan the funeral myself. I had to do all of that myself. And, and so I had to be strong for my son. I had to carry mm. on. It was, like, it was like, just carry on. You can't afford to break down. There's nobody around mm. you who's going to take care of you. So you just have to keep mm. going. You have to keep, I kept mm. ministering. I kept singing at church and, and all of that. And so <laughs> November, I couldn't, I couldn't not do what I was supposed to do. So, mm. I, I so you still the did the show. And the, I did it in December. I did it all on right. the 2nd of December, 2012. And wow. I, I, I just got that grace and that strength and that power to still carry on because mm. I knew that that place was mm. where my strength was. So mm. I went back to that place Ooh. at his feet, in his presence, the place of worship, in the secret place. And the place that where you where, could break, yeah. the place where you could break and it's okay because you are breaking yeah. in the presence of the potter. And he can be able yeah. to put you back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so I, I, I was like, okay, God, I'll do this. If this is where my healing is, then mm. I, I, I'll, I'll stay here. I'll do it. Mm. So December, I, I, I did the, the concert with a few of my friends. It was, it was, I think it was the most, uh, the greatest turnaround of my life to see people be ministered to through my story, mm. through the journey. And then when I sang um, one of his favorite songs, which was Nobody Greater by Vashon, Vashon yeah. Michelle, uh, mm -hmm. because that was a song I had put on an MP3 and just plucked in his ears. And even while he wasn't speaking, the moment I played that song, his face would light up and he would smile and all of that. And so when I, when I shared the story before singing that song, I saw people just releasing themselves to God. And I knew that I couldn't stop from that moment. Yeah. So from that moment, the 2nd of December, I couldn't stop. God just gave me strength to just carry on. Yes, there were terrible wow. days. There were horrible days. There were days I would, I would ask for a breakdown. Like, can I just break down? And just, you know, there were, there were days like that. But I can tell mm. you that since then, I have had the grace to just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Wow. Till now. And it's, wow. No, it's, it's beautiful to story. hear. <laughs> no, it's, it's very beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you for allowing us in that space because one meets you, I meet you, I don't remember what year, but it was a concert that PK and Clement had. And you came oh, yeah. and, you, yeah, and you were singing Miranda's song. And I say to Clement, who is she? Like, who <laughs> Uh, and I then went and I, I, I found you on Facebook. I followed you from there. And your ministry yeah. has been such a blessing. And to, to know Thank that you. through your parents, God put South African music in your ear. Through your yeah. husband and that love relationship, he brought you to that place. And ever yeah. since you've been here, you've been such a blessing to the body of Christ in South Africa oh, in so. such an amazing way. So we really, really, really appreciate you. So I would like you to sing at this moment. I would like us to sing. Well, you will do the singing. Um, 
Okay. There's a song that I love so much. It's titled Our God. That song yeah. does it all. I think it's befitting in this moment because it says he healed my body, transformed my mind, he touched my soul. My God, our God is good. And I think that yeah. in the midst of what's going on now, we've got the coronavirus, we've got the the sicknesses, we've got the the uncertainty of what tomorrow is going to look yeah. like. But yeah, we need to confess that he's still our God. He's still a God yeah. who heals. He's still a God who's able to to transform yeah. and change our lives. You know, and mm -hmm. even in the moment when everything stopped for you, actually everything began for you because everything he was still began. there. Yeah. He was still yeah. there. So please, let's share the song with us and the, our our audiences, okay. our friends who are streaming. Yeah. So, so the song is like uh, Bluetooth mode is uh, paired. A summary of my testimony, you know, because when when I experienced the loss, I I broke down mentally. It affected mm. my health emotionally. You know, it was it was a mess and all of that. But few years down the line, actually four years after that, 20, 2016, you know, mm. God started talking to me about healing stream, and yeah. that's where this song came from. And uh, I was like, healing stream, what is healing stream? And he says, it's time for you to start ministering, healing back to the people. And so I, I fought it, but, but there was no way I could run from it. So I was on a flight mm. to PE, and I was just mm. being grateful to God for the journey he's brought me through and mm -hmm. how he has strengthened me and all of that. And so the song just mm. started, I just started singing, our God on the flight, our God. Mm. Our God is good. And I started singing, why is he good? He's a healer. Mm. He's a provider. Mm. He's a deliverer. Mm. That's why he's mm. good. He's just God. And so, yeah. So that's how the song came. Please sang. share that with me. And, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> let me try and sing. You know, lockdown. We've not sang in a long time, but we're trying. <laughs> so, so here's our God. Can you hear it? Yeah, we can hear <laughs> All right, yeah.
That's the fuck. song so much and unfortunately time is not on our side in a few minutes yeah. this video is going to cut us but definitely i look forward to having another conversation like this thank you for sharing with us this your heart your you. journey your struggles your loss because a lot of people don't know that and i think for me when you first shared it with me i was like we need to know that story we need to know yeah. that story we need to know the lady may that cooks we need to know you know because all of that is part of who you are and i think that when yeah. ministers don't just minister from that point of power but also that point of vulnerability it makes it easier for those that yeah. are following to surrender to god yeah. so i yeah. will read a, a poem that i wrote um it's also in my book he arts which is one of the project that brought these conversations and um it's it reads stuck in a cross road it was in your mm. eyes that i found the map to your heart i had toiled all night but caught nothing surrounded by millions yet still alone speaking to yeah. thousands but heard by none i is broken clay in the hands of the potter desperately needed mending like the prodigal son i came back to my senses and retraced my steps back to your courts It is then that I touched the hem of your garments and the bleeding from my heart stopped. I had been blind, but your grace opened my eyes. I saw Amen. tongues of fire descending from the heavens granting me utterance about the mystery of our oneness. In your Amen. presence I without fear surrendered my life, remembering your invitation, saying drink of me and thirst no more. Your mercy covered my nakedness, your forgiveness and yeah. splendor left me without words. Finally I understood that it's in you I live move and have my being so yeah. lord if home is where love is and love is eternal i choose to find my refuge in you with my mouth Amen. i confess and in my heart i believe that your love is the way leading me to the truth about my life your love is the way leading me to the truth about life as we reach a conclusion of this conversation how has the love of god changed your life and how Ooh. would you share god with other people just who are maybe um, now hopeful who are stuck in a crossroad and they don't know where to yeah. go encourage them yeah. a little bit before we close off um god's love is so real the the, the mm. world will offer you, the world will offer you solutions the world will tell you come 
let's let's give you some comfort and and take mm. away your pain but mm. it, it can't last that love is not very real it's not strong it can't last but god's mm. love is perfect and in mm. god's love is everything that you need and so mm. um you may not see it physically but it's so mm. tangible that you feel it inside of you to the point where it becomes physical around you so mm. i want to encourage you whatever you're going through whatever you're facing you might have lost something someone or you know a part of your life just um turn to god because in his love is everything that you will ever need he's he's that fountain that can never run dry you keep drinking and drinking and you will never thirst again so take your focus from whatever the challenges are the problems or the issues and turn it to god and you will never regret it i i i, I don't regret it so yeah god's love is perfect his love takes away every fear every pain so um embrace his love accept his love yeah yeah and my prayer ever since i started this conversation has been i open my prayer with our father who art in heaven and i always end my prayer with whatever you see may you whenever you look down on earth may you find yourself reflected in our arts yeah. in our songs yeah. in our stories yeah. in our poems yeah. in our actions right. so our as we continue now. yeah in everything that we do so as much mm -hmm. as this book is called is titled he arts which is definitely it's just heart but it's also yeah. he as god arting in our life he, and to every yeah. yeah to everyone that um tuned in this conversation thank you so much once again thank you the guys. book yeah the book is available on amazon you can download it right now it's called he art by siposetu and uh, let's engage in conversation beyond this next that's week that's a beautiful book that's a beautiful book thank you so much yeah. thank you so much my friend So from next week Wednesday Tuesday Wednesday and Thursday we'll be having other guests joining us. But tonight we want to celebrate you Lady May. Where can people get you? How can they follow you? And uh where is your music available so that people can get some songs there? Uh it's everywhere on your online stores and your music online stores, iTunes, yeah. Spotify, uh YouTube, uh yeah, everywhere, Play Store. Uh on Facebook Yvonne May and right here on instagram ivon underscore may5 i think so i'm not i don't have energy for so much social media work so i keep it to facebook <laughs> <laughs> thank you so that's much fine. your son where's your son he should be in bed that's where he is all right that's where he is thank god all right we've got like 20 seconds left thank you thank you thank you thank you for your friendship thank you for thank always you. showing up whenever i call i appreciate I that appreciate a lot it. thank you thank Stay you blessed. so much thank you guys all right love you guys to my people we'll see you on tuesday wednesday and thursday next week 9:00 from me siposeto aslam